Thanks, Alan. Uh, hello, my name is Thomas. Uh, for those of you who aren't in law enforcement and do need an introduction, uh, I am uh, I'm a communications developer, uh, and so, oh, by the way, speaking of which, <laughs> uh, so um, I took on the challenge of doing a, a hack for this one that was uh, socially aware and locally flavored, uh, so I hope that you enjoy it, and I call it the hidden cost of living on the edge. So. Here's a nice little histogram of what the average uh, attorney costs. I've, I have this down. The most attorney hourly rate on average is 250 bucks an hour. Um, I didn't do the analysis if it costs more to get married or to get divorced. <laughs> I just know each way is pretty expensive. Um, and this might seem like a lot of money to you or not seem like a lot of money to you. But I guarantee you, if you happen to be in this situation, that's a junk ton of money. Uh, if you are a person who's living on the edge, who is homeless, who is addicted, who has, uh, who has illnesses, uh, that is an awful lot of money, which is why they have places like the Legal Aid Society of Orange County. Um, I've done a lot of uh, work in my past with legal aid societies, and one thing which is very true, uh, your, your need for legal services unfortunately increases with your poverty. Very wealthy people don't necessarily need a lot of legal advice, and people who are facing evictions and deportations do. And one of the hidden issues of being uh, uh, homeless is that particular issue. So if you, if you hadn't thought of it before, um, I encourage you to, to put a couple of thoughts towards it. Uh, there's all kinds of things you have to worry about, like evictions and, and tax issues. Um, and as you try to get these things solved, there is a, a real problem. What happens a lot is that uh, if you are in need of legal services, uh, you very often don't, you are, you are on banks, you don't have a bank account, you probably don't have credit, you probably don't have a working cell phone plan from Verizon. You have a pay by, you have a pay plan, a prepaid plan that you got at 7-Eleven, which is where this one was, and if you just see here that this $20 phone card costs 20 bucks for 60 minutes. And that means that you have to, if you have to call the legal aid services and wait on hold, it's gonna cost you 20 bucks an hour. And I don't know, and again, uh, I, haven't, I haven't yet met the person who hasn't had to wait on hold calling the legal aid services. And this is a big problem. One and a half million citizens since 2008 have experienced homelessness. This is a big indication of a big deal. So, the particular problem that I'm trying to highlight here is that voice is expensive for social services. Uh, primarily because voice requires a person to answer. Somewhere, somehow, it's a person who has to pick up the phone and talk back at you. Even if you leave a voicemail, eventually someone has to get back to you and people cost money, especially legal people. But that's not the only thing that's an issue. Voice only speaks your language because only you speak your language, and it's really difficult to translate voice on the fly. And you better hope that the person you speak to also speaks your language, which might not seem like an issue to us native born, but it's a big issue if you're an immigrant, and maybe you don't. Uh, it forgets everything that's said, and if you're living out, out of a bag, it's really hard to keep your files straight. It's really hard to keep the notes. Where's my, where'd my pen go? Uh, and it's famously difficult to automate. So these efficiency issues are, are intractable. And then finally, voice is never discreet. Unless you whisper. And that's kind of like asking for it sometimes. There are times and places where you need to communicate. You're being abused, you're in trouble, you're in a corner, and you need to communicate discreetly. The messaging is great for that. So we have an opportunity to help this, and that's through messaging, because messaging changes the conversation. Because messaging does not always require people. We have bots. We can respond quickly to say, hey, listen, I'm here. Just, just hold on a second. And it speaks the language you speak and the language your other side speaks because you can translate it. We just saw that demonstration. Messaging never forgets. If I tell you something on messaging, if you don't lose your phone, you don't lose what I said. Much harder to lose things that way. Messaging is really quiet. 
And so it keeps you safe when you need to be quiet. And so I did, I did this matchup using FlowRoute. Flow um, and it was a real joy, actually. Uh, the APIs that they provided to me were uh, perfect, uh, perfect abstraction. They were easy to understand. The documentation was fantastic. Had it up and running in an hour. It was a real joy to work with. Um, and you know, sometimes you want just enough. Their APIs for messaging were just enough. They were perfect. So here's the demo I'm going to give you. Um, so I took an existing phone number and I text enabled it so that when you text into it, it says, hey, if someone's here, I'm listening. You don't have to wait on hold for three hours for someone to get back to you. So I said, welcome announcement. So you have to wait on hold and burn your whole prepaid card waiting for someone to talk to you. You have to wait until 1 o'clock in the afternoon on Monday for someone to talk to. You could have done it overnight when you really needed some help. Um, I translated languages for the customers and the agents so that when you're texting in, uh, you didn't have to worry about, okay, listen, I, I speak you know, Chinese, and no one in that legal aid center is going to speak Chinese, even though it's you know, a good percentage of the population in Orlando. Um, and I made it really easy to share information so you could really quickly do things. So here I've got a, a, a quick screenshot here. I know I'm kind of running out of time, but I wanted to show it to you. So over here on the left is my conversation. I texted in hello. And I had an automatic thing that said, thank you for texting the Legal Aid Society of the Orange County Bar Association. And then I, I, I typed, I didn't really type this in, actually. I, just, I don't speak Chinese. I, I translated it and I copied it. <laughs> and then I put it in. But, but this was my experience as, as, the, as, the, as the consumer, as the person who had the phone. I'm only speaking my language because that's what I speak. But over here, if I'm the agent, I see the hello. But I also see what the message was. I was afraid of being deported, especially since my daughter was born here. She did not record. Okay, that's not quite what I said, but it's close enough. I'm afraid of deportation. My daughter was born here. I'm afraid. And that's my hack. Come on, really come down a little bit. Thanks. That was excellent, Thomas. Any questions? So Thomas, ah, good. Sean, really, you've got to have a question. He was very complimentary on your APIs, guys. He was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but what I think Thomas highlighted a very important point is there's multiple layers, because there's multiple uses for the capabilities you expose. Sometimes you just need something that's quick and dirty, and as you said, just enough to get things up and running. Uh, and then, of course, there you go, William. Uh, who did you use for your translation service? Was that a Google Translate? Or I, I, yeah. so, people, yeah. so the question was, what did I use for my translation services? I use Google Translate in this, and I often use Google Translate. I've had a lot of luck with IBM Watson's translation services as well. Um, and my estimation of it is, like here, it gets you most of the way there. Uh, if you're an organization like Legal Aid and you can't afford your own translator, which is an expense for Legal Aid, frankly, it's a big one, uh, it gets you a lot of the way there. So um, we shouldn't be afraid to use it, even if it's not perfect. If not, any more questions? Thank you so much, Thomas. Now you stay here because you're going to do a little bit more. Yeah. <laughs> and just to mention that Erin uh, from Code for Orlando is here. So she uh, yesterday provided some guidance and then was talking to all the teams. And what Thomas has created here is an excellent example of how we can use technology to solve very specific needs for uh, community members.